Okay. <laughs> this happens too. At first, I thought that maybe you didn't know enough about the Enneagram types and that you had mistyped people. <laughs> but now I realize that it was the opposite. You knew more about the types than others. But how do I know what type people are leading with? What do you think is the best way to type people? I use all those. What formula do you use, Spencer, when you're working with people? Gosh, I mean, I'm I'm more of a wing it type of person. So I'll be honest, I when I'm talking to someone, I just notice what floats to the surface the most. If you think of a latte, your primary number uh, is actually the espresso, right? So it's the thing at the core of you. That's what makes this coffee, right? What makes it, you know, uh, you know, a caffeinated drink is the milk. What makes it a latte is specifically the foam. So long story short, I'm probably getting away with myself with this. You analogy. can tell one of the jobs he had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my, that was one of my first serious jobs with Starbucks. Um, <laughs> it's seeing what, like, what really what activates them the most? What are they talking about the most? Um, Cause they're gonna address all of it. And there's gonna be a general picture that I get. Cause whenever I'm looking at someone I'm breaking up into three sections instantly. I'm just being like, okay, of your heart types, what am I seeing? Of your gut types, what am I seeing? Of your head types, what am I seeing? So I try to identify those three numbers first without identifying a primary. And then from there, well, the one I probably distinguish first is most likely your primary because it's the most obvious to see. It's the one you're talking about the most. It's the one that you're behaving like the most. There's certain gestures and statements that certain numbers will just do more than others. Um, and that that's pretty much how I do it. Um, but I'll be honest, I've never been like a technique person. So like it was more just me winging it and just getting like a feel, like I feel it. And I just see kind of what pops up the most. And are you feeling that in the interview before you've had them take the test and give you that yes. feedback? Yes, I actually even start during the consult because when I'm trying to figure out like, what, what do you hope to accomplish with me? That's a great question to see kind of what they're focused on the most, what matters to them the most. Right. If I'm talking to someone and they're, you know, and they're focusing on other people and like, you know, connecting with others, right. I'm going to focus on more connecting types like twos and nines and things like and sixes and things like that. So, and then, you know, if, and then as we go on and on and on more of what they will reference, um, that's a big one. And then obviously when I see them in the first session, I get to see them and I get to see their mannerisms and their yeah. facial expressions. And then it just solidifies from there, but I try really hard not to type until they actually take the test because I really try to not project my thinkings and feelings because exactly. I don't know your inner world. I know exactly. your behaviors and what you're saying, but I don't know what's driving you to do or say that. So I try to remind myself that even though this has been literally my whole life, I never want to get to the point where I'm like, oh, you're this, right? And then not even see like what they think and kind of go from there. And, you know, people that are, in Myers-Briggs types that are intuitive perceiving, that's mm. the NP, mm. tend to be open. And I know, like Spencer, I might say, oh, yeah, that's what a five says, or that's what a three says, or mm -hmm. that's what a two says, because I'm going to let people know when they've used an adjective or chosen cards in a particular way, but I'm open all the way through and sometimes i'm too open because at the end people go back to what the test said and they didn't really listen to the fact was saying you might identify with that but these five adjectives with this fear and this need is another type mm -hmm. than you think so in the last month or so I've been telling people more why my hypothesis is there a certain type. And if they have six in the tri-type, they need more time because first they have to orient to the fact that they didn't understand six because it wasn't out there. So we have to add in the data we didn't have. And I didn't have all that data at first either. 
So pregnant with Spencer, 1985, but I didn't really run formally the first research till 1994. And that was after attending the Stanford conference, which was the first conference on the Enneagram. It was before the IEA. In fact, the IEA was formed as a result of that event, which is the International Enneagram Association. But what was so rich for me is that there were people from all over the Enneagram world. Some people were coming from out of the country and they all had studied with different teachers. And I thought, wow, this is great. Some people know the subtypes, some people don't. Some people think wings are important, other people don't. Let me see what that means and how they would answer the questionnaire. And then from there, I would see people that use the same words that didn't know each other, had gone through different trainings with different teachers, and then I did interviews when there was a pattern that they couldn't possibly know this because it wasn't in a book. It was not available anyway. It became of great interest to me and still, it still is. So whenever I see a pattern again, because I look at the tests every day, now there are too many for me to go through all of them in depth every day now, but I will scan a few hundred at a time because I know the words that are used. I know like what their banner says and the things that create a certain ambiance. Because at one point, a number of years ago, which is a lot now, but it seemed like just yesterday, but about 15, 18 maybe years ago, I took all the people that had taken my free test online, which was the original any cards test, and their any style questions and what it said they were based on how they chose those cards and what was actually more their type. And I used the vocabulary to create a plus and minus system. So if someone said anywhere on the questionnaire, vulgar, that was a plus five for a four. They're the only person that says they avoid vulgar people because it's very descriptive and it creates an, a whole image of a person. Whereas the other types don't use that. Just like the fear of dangerous people. And if you name who's dangerous, that's even more social six. And with the one, it's when there's a should anywhere on their questionnaire. And sixes, if they have one and six, they definitely can be more rule oriented. And some are very rule bound. And if they're social, even more. So all these things are important together. 